The craziest thing about what I would say is the craziest plot twist of Classroom of the Elite up to this point is how honestly I know Koji wishes this was true because everything that we saw especially with what I talked about last week I know Koji he cares a lot more than he lets on but the thing about it is that the white room messed with him like he is actually broken and there's no other way to put it the moment with k and his confession the thing about a moment like that is how you all you immediately know that for k it's a much different moment than it is for him but as we saw especially with last week he cares a lot more than just simply using people as chess pieces he still does that and will do that but there is a genuine level of connection, a lot different than your average human because of what the White Room did for him. But the fact that he says, I like you, let's go out, she's very happy, and the whole buildup of being like, listen, we're gonna do this, and she needs this to grow, and I need her to learn about this, this human connection known as romance. And when it's all done, when the textbook known as K is over, I will get rid of her. But, and this is the big point, he hopes he won't get there. And he hopes that in a moment when he's holding a loved one, he's smiling, but he's not. Does that mean he never will smile? No. But as it stands, if that moment was tomorrow, he would toss her away. And that's what's actually truly heartbreaking about Aino Koji's character, is that the White Room made him emotionless. But over the course of year one, He's actually built a decent amount of emotion. So while by the end of year two, he may not be the most natural emotional guy out there, potentially by the end of year three, he could be. And the hook that they do, that kind of sequel bait hook of, I'm going to put someone from the White Room, another success. If you can find them by the end of April, I'll, I'll resign. I'll leave. And it, that's honestly a really fun hook. But really, it's that love confession that really seals the deal for this being, in my opinion, the best season of Classroom of the Elite, and why I am very hopeful for a season four. Of course, I have full live reactions to all these wonderful episodes of Classroom of the Elite over on my Patreon. If you want to see my full and good thoughts to this or any of these episodes, they're over there if you're interested. So, walking in, I didn't really have major expectations. They could really do whatever because I knew this first year was wrapping up. I wasn't really expecting anything bombastic or explosive, and then they give like pretty much a jump scare moment with our boy. I don't know what that Sakuga was doing, but that attack and then the deflecting of the kick. Why was the animation so good in that scene? I don't know, but I thank them for it. Maybe because they didn't really have to cook too much recently. They are like, hey, we have a little extra time. Why not give that attack animation the extra chef's kiss there? And uh, honestly, I thank them for it. But it was kind of nice seeing all the different situations, all the different connections, because this is a fairly large group of characters, so it was kind of nice seeing where they're all ending up at the end of this year, and ultimately where different characters want Aino Koji to go. Like, hey, join our class. If you do this, Class A is guaranteed pretty much going forward. Aino Koji being the guy he is. Yeah, that would be fun, but you don't got 20 million points, and honestly, I like having him as an antagonist or a rival, so nah, I'm good. Just everything about it felt like it was tying up loose ends, but showing where the next chapter was going to go. Stuff like Horikita, they have the bet. Hey, let's compete with the exams next year. If I win, you'll give 100%. He's basically saying there's no one worth giving 100% to, but sure, I'll take this bet. And if I win, you'll join the student council. It's like everything about it just sets up a sequel without it being as much of a blue balls as the end of season one was. And if you watch Classroom of the Elite season one when it ended, most of us were like, oh, season two is definitely going to happen. And then a year goes by. And then two years goes by. And then three years goes by. And then you just stop thinking you're like it, it ain't gonna happen so the fact that they came back with seasons two and three to finish off this year it's entirely possible we won't get a full adaptation of classroom of the elite but at the very least we did something i didn't think we would get which was the complete year one story you can talk about rush you can talk about cut content at the end of the day we did get the full first year one for an anime and that is fantastic something i didn't think was going to happen the longer the years went on I remember every so often, you know, when you do like, hey, what are you going to watch this anime season? People would be like, oh, you know, I really hope we see a class. In the and I tell people, stop hoping it's not going to happen because why the hell would it after all this time? And then they proved me wrong and I was so happy to be proven wrong. I know Koji's character was the star of this season, but in a different way than past seasons because you really get a sense of 
how much the White Room corrupted him, but how much he hopes that not only can he cherish this time, he firmly believes he's going to be going back there when his school's all said and done. Obviously, they're trying to get him back there before school's done, but he's not going to go down without a fight. But the idea that he really wants to have that normal life, to try to understand humans better, what is love, what is friendship, what is all these things, and he wants to cherish it and be like them, but the White Room and how he was trained really warped his view of reality. That, that amazing moment with Kay is so good because it doesn't come across as cold and manipulative like it would have in Season 1 or even Season 2. It is technically that, but it's him almost like begging and pleading in the Aino Koji way. Please make this connection so meaningful that even if I no longer am learning things and from his logical point of view doesn't need her, that he doesn't toss her away. But as we see with where he's at, he wasn't smiling. So it's like, it's gonna take a hell of an arc, maybe multiple arcs for him to get out of this white room, mainly focused point of view. But that's kind of the brilliance of where a year two would definitely go. And that's really exciting. Out of everything that could happen this episode, confession was the least on my mind. Really, the biggest thing for me that I've kind of felt like a plot to us was the fact that we're actually finishing year one, something I never thought would happen in the anime. But the idea of how they did the kind of bait with, of course, you know, Horikita and Aino Koji doing their thing with the, you know, because she knows that if he gives 100%, they're going to be unstoppable. And he's basically like, there's nothing worth giving 100%. I'm really excited if we do get another season you know, trying to figure out who's the infiltrator, who's the other person from the White Room, and, you know, obviously the chairman's saying, hey, you're not the only success, you're kind of shit out of luck, and Aino Koji's saying, I'm the best. That's a cool arc right there, but then you got all the stuff with the students, and all these different interpersonal relationships, there is a lot to explore, but at the very least, we did something most anime fans gave up on long, long ago. And that was seeing the conclusion to at least year one. Everyone thought if it did come back for a season two, that's all it would do. And then they said, no, nah, we're going to make sure we finish year one. And while it may have had its issues, may have had its ups and downs, as an anime only, I was very much entertained. And honestly, what they did to Aino Koji's character and how it made me re-evaluate him as a person was such a fun thing to follow, especially towards the end of Season 3. But let me know what you thought down below, because to me, this was the craziest plot to us, because it kind of goes back to what I was talking about last week, and just how it really reinforces how much more complex Aino Koji is, even at face value, to what he seems to think, even about himself, or how characters are viewing him. So, thoughts down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, and of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more. And hey, like I mentioned, we have full live reactions to all these wonderful episodes over on my Patreon, and while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today, we got Durdberg Jude, Third Dynasty, Arter Kunha, Fabian, and Tycho. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. Have a good one.